Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I would like to welcome everyone to the next installment in Sino Biological's Lock and Key webinar series. I am Rob Burgess and I head up business development for Sino Biological and it's my honor to be your host today. So with that, before I introduce our esteemed speaker, I just want to get to a few housekeeping issues. Number one is if you would don't mind if you would please just enter your questions that you might have for the speaker into the chat box. We will scroll through those questions and get to them at the end of the seminar. So we're going to withhold all questions and answers until the end when we scroll through them in the chat box. Also, reach out in the chat box and say where you're from. It's always interesting to figure out what parts of the world people are chiming in from, and we would really appreciate it. Makes it much more fun that way. Also, I wanted to mention that this is actually, in fact, a recorded webinar, but Dr. Liu is on the line now, and she will be on the line at the end of her recorded webinar to answer the questions. So with that, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker. It is Dr. Lu, Yu Lu. And Dr. Lu obtained her doctorate from University of Sherbrooke in Quebec. Dr. Lu has more than 20 years experience in therapeutic antibody development. And she has led and participated in multiple therapeutic antibody studies on various diseases. In 2017, Dr. Liu founded Ab Studio Incorporated, which I believe is the focus of the talk today. And she founded this, and she also developed many unique technologies at Ab Studio Incorporated. Ab Studio has now licensed out five bispecific antibodies and one tri-specific antibody to biopharma companies. Among these include GB261, which is a computer-designed FC-enabled CD20 and CD3 T-cell engager. And this has now entered into a clinical phase one and two trial. And they have shown proof of concept in safety and efficacy for this. So Dr. Dr. Liu, it's a wonderful pleasure to have you. And the title of Dr. Liu's talk today is the development of multi-specific therapeutic antibodies via computer-aided design. And with that, we will go ahead and start the recorded webinar. Thank you. Thank you, CytoBio. Thank you, everyone. The title for my presentation today is Development of Multi-Specific Therapeutic Antibodies via Compute-Aided Design. Here is the agenda. So I will first introduce the landscape of multi-specific antibody development, then talk about the challenge in this field. So finally, I will share my experience and some review studies on how to apply compute edit design to develop novel multi-specific therapeutic antibodies. So first, the landscape. The term multi-specific antibody is used to describe a large family of molecules designed to recognize more than one different epitopes or antigens. Multi-specific antibodies come in many formats ranging from relatively small proteins, merely consisting of several linked antigen binding fragments, to large IgG-like molecules with additional domains attached. An attractive multi-specific antibody feature is their potential for novel functionalities, that is, activities that do not exist in mixtures of the parental or reference antibodies. To date, more than 20 different commercialized technology platforms are available for bispecific antibody creation and development. Seven bispecific antibodies are marketed and over 85 are in clinical development. So this figure shows us so history and the phase distribution of bispecific clinical trials worldwide during 2011 to 2020. So Fig B shows us cancer types that by specific antibodies are being used against. And this figure shows us by specific antibody ND submissions have grown significantly in recent years, 
especially from 2017 to nowadays. Currently, there are seven bispecific antibodies approved for listing globally. Some are approved by FDA and some are approved by EMA. So what is the challenge in the field of multi-specific antibody development? Like all other therapeutic antibodies, one challenge for multi-specific antibody is safety, efficacy, and the manufacturability balance. Another unique main challenge for multi-specific antibody is the development of multi-specific antibody is that there are more than two types of chains, heavy and light, that when mismatched may produce a variety of side products. So therefore, several strategies are used to achieve correct matching of heavy and light chains. This is a figure cited from a previous bispecific antibody review show how many bispecific antibody architectures there are. So this is several years ago. Uh, now there are more structures and then uh, the, that in the review, that are described in the review. So if we summarize uh, how many by specific antibody platforms there are, I think there are two kinds of them, IH-like and non ih like Among IH-like by specific antibodies, they can be divided into two major groups, um, asymmetric and symmetric. So some of these bispecific antibodies need a common IT and some of them do not need a common IT. And then for non it like uh, bispecific antibodies, BITE, DART, TAMBABS, BINANOBODIES are the most popular applied uh, formats. Other than um, the mispairing issue, there are other manufacturing challenges for multi-specific antibody development. For example, uh, the more complex composition challenge, stable expression system and production yields challenge, correct assembly challenge, absence of undesired side product challenge, and the stability challenge. So let's use the seven approved by specific antibody as case studies to show how the challenges are successfully overcome. So example one is catumaxomab. So this is the water's first T-cell engager. So this antibody is a myelin rat chimeric antibody with FC effect function. So this antibody with one arm binds to CD3 and another arm binds to EPCAM. The original design from the biology angle is try to enable this antibody with all mechanisms to kill cancer. So these all mechanisms, including T-cell activation and the T-cell-based cancer carrying, then ADCC, ADCP. However, so during the clinical trial study, so the researchers found that when the dosing is higher in human body, because FC binds to FCR, and the human liver is enriched of copper cell, which is, has a lot of FCR. So bridging for CD3 binding on T cell and FC binding on FCR uh, positive copper cell leads to local CRS, so cytokine uh, release storm, and uh, cause liver damage. Because of that, so the dose of catamaxomab is less than 10 microgram. And from then on, all, almost all other T cell engagers, so when they are developed, the FC function is either removed or silenced. So this is from biology angle. And then from the manufacturer angle, so the rat and the murine by specific antibody has some unique features. So first, uh, the murine light chain does not uh, pair with the rat heavy chain very well. Similarly, the rat light chain does not pair with the murine heavy chain very, very well as a result. So this antibody does not need a common light chain because the two light chain won't pair with another species heavy chain very well. Secondary, 
because right antibody, right uh, IgG2B does not bind to protein A very well. So during the purification process by using protein A column, only the bispecific antibody and the murine IgG monoclonal antibody can be purified and lab 2 can be separated by the sequential pH erosion. So this is a, a very unique feature for rat and mouse chimeric antibody. The second antibody is brinsital. So this is a non-IgG-like bispecific antibody. So an SCFV targeting CD3 and an SCFV targeting CD19 are fused together by gs -Link. The This antibody, the advantage is, so the purification is easier. And uh, it has great function. However, the half-life is very short, only 2.1 hours. So an infusion bump has to be applied for clinical application, which is not very convenient. Yeah. The third one is amethyromab. So this one, I want to introduce the detail of its development process, because uh, this antibody was uh, initially um, developed at the Chugai and then acquired by Roche. So Chugai almost applied all antibody engineering technicals in order to develop this specific antibody. From biology angle, so this antibody is to limit factor 8 binds to factor 9 and factor 10 in order to activate factor 10 to, into factor um, 10A and as a result to activate the coagulation cascade. In order to make this by specific antibody, Chugai first uh, and developed the 200 monoclonal antibodies targeting fact 9A. And then in parallel, they developed the 200 monoclonal antibodies targeting fact 10. So 200 times 200, there are 40,000 combinations for four chain by specific antibodies. So Chugai testing all 40,000 combinations for factor 8 mimic function. From the functional screening, so they selected 94 antibodies as leading molecules. The 94 combination has 188 light chains. Then Chugai tested all these light chains to see which one is the best common light chain. And then three common light chains they all have framework and the CDR domains. If you treat each domain as a card, so Chuge did the domain sharing work and created a domain sharing library. So then they fish out the next generation, a better common IT. It's called BS15L from this domain sharing library. So the BS15L, the pink domain, are from C3L. The blue domain are from C1L and the orange domain is from C2 and C3L. After BS15L is created, so the following sequence optimization are performed by using um, antibody engineering technologies. The first work is humanization. So from BS15, now the new antibody is called HBS1. After humanization, it's in fact, it mimic activity improvement. So this is like a CDR randomization, then uh, fish out the new leader with better fact eight mimic function. Then is the PK improvement, including like Y30E mutation to introduce a negative charge in order to neutralize a positive patch. So positive patch can reduce PK because cell membrane has negative charge. So if an uh, antibody has a lot of positive patch on the surface, it will be not specifically internalized by the negative charge the cells and have a shorter PK. Then uh, following the PK improvement is PI differentiation. After that is to remove surface hydrophobic residue in order to remove the aggregation surface and improve solubility. After that is the amidation sites remo removed. So remove um, the amidation site is to um, reduce the chemical instability and to improve the purity. So 
After that, the last step is the immunization to remove T cell epitope predicted by Lana's uh, epibase and uh, epivax epimatrix. After all these engineering works are done, then the final lead is called HBS19. So for all those engineering, the most difficult part is how to balance each optimization. Sometimes when you improve the affinity, you introduce a new aggregating surface, then how you balance that. So after all this hard work, so since you got this final lead HBS19 is the current MSU map on the market. In the, uh, the following slides, I will introduce if we now using computation design, we can do all this work by designing in silico and the test it on, ben on bench. The next antibody is Johnson's ME vector map, EGF bar C met by specific antibody. So this by specific antibody applied the uh, um, door body. So this is GMAPS technology. So basically it's controlled the FAB arm exchange technology. So uh, one antibody has F four oh five L mutation in the F C domain, the other one has K409 R mutation in the FC domain. So the two antibody uh, was respectively produced by two different cell lines. So after the production, so the two antibody uh, can have arm exchange uh, and MAE and induction. So to make the in the reducing engine to induction. So this antibody can treat a uh, um, drug resistant lung cancer. So and show very good clinical efficacy. So the fifth one is an um, Pharisee map. This is an ANG2 VHFA by specific antibody targeting a weight AMD and a DME. So this antibody is from Roche. It, it applied Roche's cross map technology and a knobbing to hold technology. So in the FC domain, CH3, there is knobbing to hold design. And in the FV domain, the ANG2 binding arm. So VH is fused to CL, while VL is fused to CH1. So there is a, a switch between CL and CH1 to create the cross map. So the next one is Loesch's uh, most nutritional map, CD20, CD3, by specific antibody. So this antibody actually, the CD20 arm and the CD3 arm are produced in two different equalized trees. So therefore, there is no glycosylation. As a result, no FC effect function. So the knob and the hole mutations efficiently suppress heavy chain dimerization and the full length antibody formation, but not a heavy light formation. So the knob and the hole containing half antibodies were expressed in similar amounts. And then and by using the knob and the hole, they can form a heterodimer and afterwards. The last one is a technical system map. So this is also the door body technology. So it's a controlled fib arm exchange. Uh, unlike EGFR and CMET, this antibody has an IG4FC domain, which means it has no effect function. So this is a traditional design for T cell engager. So BCMS3 can target multiple myeloma as a T cell activation range in here. Okay, after we review how other people successfully make commercially available by specific therapeutic antibodies, now comes to the major topic, how to apply computation design to develop the next generation novel multi specific therapeutic antibodies. So this is like a, a landscape review for AR and the CAAD aided therapeutic antibody development. So I believe right now an um, AI or CAD can do four levels of works. Level one is antibody optimization, including humanization, remove immunogenicity, remove post translational motif, improve expression and appearance maturation, improve biophysical and biochemical feature, and improve cross species binding. All these can be done by sequence optimization in silico and uh, be tested on bench. The second level is to enable 
an antibody with a non-antibody feature. For example, AB Studio created a catalytic antibody platform. We, we inserted or we mutated um, a serine protease motif um, into IgG format. So therefore, the IgG format antibody contains serine protease activity. This is to enable an antibody with non-antibody features. So the third level is original design or original replacement. Uh, I will give you guys uh, case studies later on how we design a CD20 monoclonal antibody into a bispecific antibody. Then the level four is complex multi-specific antibody optimization and design. And I will also show some case studies later. So this is like uh, how we perform computer-aided antibody design. So we will first build up a 3D antibody antigen model applying Google AlphaFold. Then um, based on the complex structure, what we can do is we can analyze the antigen antibody interface to do in silico mutation in order to improve antigen binding ability. Uh, we can also do a 3D surface analysis on the antibody structure for positive patch, negative patch, hydrophobic patch, and the post translation motif, PI, and the immunogenicity epitopes. So we will remove um, some um, patches which will cause trouble um, later on in manufacturing process. For example, if there are too many positive patches, we can uh, induce, um, we can introduce a negative patch to uh, neutralize the positive patch. But if positive patch and the negative patch are too large and interact with each other, that can be another resource for aggregation that needs to be removed. Then hydrophobic patch usually contributes to aggregation surface, so it needs to be removed. And the post translation motifs such as the amidation, isomerization will cause the chemical instability. Instability, so it needs to be removed. And uh, guide constellation will have an induced heterogeneity, which will be improved. And the immunogenicity epitope, if it's like a T epitope, no matter it's 3D or 1D, it's on surface or better, it all needs to be uh, removed. Otherwise, the MHC2 will display the, the T cell epitope on the APC cell surface and to cause immunogenicity. So for some other uh, immunogenicity epitope, like B cell epitope, if it's buried on the 3D surface, it's less, uh, it has low risk. If it's exposed, it has higher risk. And just to give an example, so this is AB Studio's toolbox um, of multi specific antibodies. And uh, here is case studies from AB Studio. So we published uh, um, four um, later stage breakthrough posters at AACR 2021 um, and introducing three bi specific antibodies and one tri specific antibodies. So GB261, which is a bi-specific antibody, and GB263T, which is a tri-specific antibody, both are, are at clinical trial stage right now. So this is the computational design process of GB261, the CD20 C3 bi-specific antibody. So we designed it from Mutaximab, which is the CD20 monoclonal antibody of which the patent is already expired. So we replace HCDR123 in one VHM of rotaximab with the HCDR123 from another CD3 binding antibody. And then we differentiate the binding ability of CD20 and CD3, and we humanize and demonize the antibody v region. And in the FC domain, so uh, we introduce ETYY mutation uh, to improve heterodimorphomation. And we safely mutated the FC effect function by significantly reducing CD3 binding ability. So this is like a new generation of T cell engaging. It not only has T cell activation function, but also CDC, ADCC, ADCP. Similar design as the world's first by specific antibody and the EPCAM CD3, but it has like a retained FC uh, effect function with safety proven in humanized mouse and in uh, cyanide model. So this is the publication on this work.
And uh, we also published a review last year on how to optimize therapeutic antibodies with computational design. So basically, we talk about the lead optimization process. So for any antibody, no matter monoclonal or multi-specific antibody, the key is safety, efficacy, and the manufacturability balance. So computation design can enable uh, the design and optimization of this balance uh, easier with like a shorter time and a low cost. And this is a publication from uh, uh, our team talking about the ETYY mutation in FC domain and how this design can improve heterodimer formation for asymmetric IgG-like antibodies. So this is a case study for C23. And in figure A, so V2 is a knob into hole. So this is Loesch's first generation knob into hole. And when we apply this first generation knob into hole mutation, and as you can see from a fixed C, V2 does not have very high percentage of heterodimer formation. Then uh, V5B is better, but still not optimized. V4B is the best. So V4B, we can see very significant heterodimer formation improvement. So this is like a case study to show this ETY1 mutation FC domain can improve heterodimer formation. So we applied ETYY in three different multi-specific antibodies, two bispecific and one tri-specific. And this is the, the parameters from the CMC work. So the CD23 and CMET1, CMET2, EGF are tri-specific antibody. Both of them are on clinical trial study right now. So other than IgG like multi-specific antibody, so we also make non-IgG-like by specific antibody. Here is another case study. So as we can see uh, in the figure, the structure of this a uh, tri-specific antibody is we fused three humanized VHH domain with human IgG1 FC. So this is the FC-enabled tri-specific antibody targeting SARS-CoV-19-2. So this antibody binds to three different epitopes on the AC2 binding domain of the S protein in SARS-CoV-2. As a result, it has a very good function to antagonize different uh, um, the COVID-19 variants. So if there are mutations in domain 1, as well as domain 2, domain 3 are not significantly affected, the tri-specific antibody will still maintain the own status because there are three binding domains, not only one binding domain. So this antibody is under ND enabling process right now. So this antibody is designed to have very good thermal stability. So as we can see here, at 45 degree for four weeks, the KD has no change and also TM value and all the other biophysical biochemical features are still very good. This is the summary of my presentation today. So we believe Computational design can significantly speed up the discovery, engineering, and the development process of multi-specific antibodies. And the application of multi-specific antibodies uh, are not limited in therapeutic antibody field. It can also be applied for mRNA therapy, AAV therapy, and cell therapy. So um, thank you again. Thank you, everyone. And I'm, I'm ready to take your questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Lou, that was a wonderful talk. We appreciate you pre-recording it and sharing it with us. In the interest of time, I'm actually going to jump right into the questions, which are in the chat box here. Hold on one second. I want to scroll up to the first question we got. And Dr. Lou, this one is from Kenneth Renneker. And I think this is general, a general opinion question about software modeling and AI in general for antibody and maybe other therapeutics development. Do you think it's in its infancy or do you think maybe it needs another couple of years, three to five years to really come online and be mainstream for development of antibodies and other therapeutics? Can you share your thoughts on that? Okay, so I think if you are talking about the novel design, it will take some time. I don't think that the novel design is mature yet. So for example, we try to 
the novel designed an antibody. Suppose this antibody should bind to antigen A, but when we, we test on bench, it binds to A, B, C. So B and C are non-relevant antigen, but it has like a priority bind to A and it has lower binding to B and C, but not a clean, clear background. So, but if we are talking about whether we can use these um, tools to optimize therapeutic antibody, my answer is yes. Because anyway, bench result is uh, the, the readout of your design, right? So when we talk about in silico design, we never say we skip the bench test. So bench test always give you the answer. But I think uh, um, from all the case studies we have, so it's a very powerful tool for antibody optimization but not the novelty lines of that. Great, thank you. Appreciate that answer. And Kenneth has a second quick question. Which company is leading an AI-based antibody development? Maybe it's App Studio, or if not, <laughs> uh, I want to say that uh, in my mind, the best one is David Baker, right? So his company mm -hmm. and his team, so they are very great and they are the leader in this field. So AB Studio is one of the few like uh, companies with the tools and uh, we already show at the clinical stage, our designed antibody shows them like uh, uh, clinical safety efficacy and balance at, at the current dose, I can only say something like that. So I think uh, most uh, of AI or CAD company, so they are still at the preclinical or ID enabling stage, but I believe there will be more and more clinical success in the next several years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Young Wong Chian, if I pronounced that correctly, apologize if I didn't, is asking, in general, the model found using AlphaFold2 has a lot of very unstable combinations and, and Young Wu is just curious, how could you refine that? Okay, so we sometimes try to uh, refine that, but sometimes what we do is, so usually AlphaFold will give you like uh, 20 structures for any query sequence and then we will align the top five. So uh, in some situations, the top five, uh, like zero, one, two, three, four, so they are structure alignment is very good, which means mm -hmm. the software has confidence. Like uh, from eight database, it is studied, right? The structure mm -hmm. should be like that. But sometimes you will see the top five that are very different, like uh, the angle, active, which means the software itself is confused by the, the database activity, right? Because it don't know which one should be the, the best one. So mm -hmm. uh, we will like, uh, so we will try to do this. So if we have, several leading antibody sequences. We will build up more than all of them. Then we will select the one of which the top five structures share very, uh, share very good alignment. Then we believe this is a structure, the software has confidence and to move forward there. Great, great, thanks for that. Fausto Mino is asking what's the margin of error between the old-fashioned organic model for development and the AI or computer software model? Um, I think, uh, so what we do is, uh, we, after we build up the 3D uh, model, right, we use like uh, Schrodinger by Luminate and some other in-house filters. So Schrodinger is basically study like uh, the biophysics, like uh, the uh, amino acid, uh, uh, because uh, if the energy, so they study the energy then to determine whether the interaction of the two are strong or are weaker. And then Schrodinger can also uh, mark the uh, positive patch, negative patch, uh, hydrophobic patch, but we will filter them based on our in-house uh, database. So then uh, we will um, like uh, rank them, which we need to pay attention, which we think uh, doesn't make sense or something like that, and then to move forward. So I think for, regular antibody humanization and optimization, the successful rate are very high. And for a fit maturation, our successful rate right now is 80%, so which means 20% we will fail. And among the 80% of successful case studies, um, the, the improvement is from two thirds to uh, 37 thirds from one round of optimization. Uh, I'm not so sure if that answers your question, but I, I, I'm, I'm saying it like, uh, I think for general application, like uh, humanization, optimization, the software are very good, yeah. But for more advanced design, I think uh, 
uh, that requirement is higher and it's case by case, yeah. Great, thanks for that. Eight out of 10 is not bad, certainly. Don Mian Leung has a great question here. Do you have to have the antigen antibody complex structure to do your engineering? Uh, if you talk about the crystal structure, of course, if there is, it's better. But if there yeah. is no existing crystal structure or crying E structure, so this is how we use software to build up, like AlphaFold can build up like uh, the um, two protein, so protein, protein um, complex structure, uh, typically like antigen antibody complex structure, right? So as I said, the structure is not necessary believable. So because the, we, we were aligning the top five to see how accurate it is to guide our design. Mm -hmm. Great. And Nohemi Salinas asks, is it possible to design monoclonal antibody conjugates via computer assisted antibody design? So if you are asking for ADC Yes, you can, but not for the chemical kind of mission path. It's for mm -hmm. where to insert the link, right? Because ADC, uh, sometimes it's directly uh, segmentation on antibody. Sometimes it's like uh, you need to add the link then do the chemical kind of mission. So the, the 3D analysis and the design can help you to judge uh, where to mutate and where to insert your link. So this mm -hmm. can be helpful. But regarding chemical kind of mission, I don't think uh, yeah, this will be very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Ahmed Bader is asking, he states stability in silico assessment is a huge challenge for antibodies. So what can be the best option to be used for both FAB and FC? Actually, right now, uh, we can uh, we use the model like the FV domain. So for monoclonal antibody, and from our case studies, it seems like if we optimize, because FC is the same, right? FV is different. So for monoclonal antibody, our experience is if you optimize the FV, then after you make an IgG, usually there's no problem. What's difficult is for um, bispecific, tri-specific, those more complicated structure. So even you optimize the FV, but it would be a, a symmetric structure or it would be like a, uh, lamb antibody when it's fused to FC, special bio triformat, it's very sticky. So for those more complicated, complex structure, that need additional work because it's difficult to make a, a full structure uh, for the uh, uh, query sequence for those complicated antibody. We usually only can make like piece by piece, like the FV, then FC, and the, the additional added domain. So piece by piece, then link those information together. So this kind of design, usually it needs some like, a, for after the first round of design, we do bench. Then from the bench data, it comes back to feed the design and then to start the second round of design. So after several rounds of design, it's like a design bench, then bench data come back to guide your next round of design. Then we can have a successful molecule. Yeah. But overall, mm -hmm. the timeline is still much shorter compared to traditional work here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. We have lots of great questions here, but we also have plenty of time left. So I'll just keep running through them if that's all right. Xavier Arias is asking, which software do you use in CAD? And do you use MD simulations at some point in the process? Uh, actually, so we use uh, AlphaFold for modeling and we use Schilling by Luminate. We also use some in-house created, it's more like a patch. We don't do foundational. Mm -hmm. Uh, algorithm, but we did uh, write something to like add patches on the existing uh, licensed uh, soft software. So combining them together. Yeah. Okay, great, great. And Ahmed Bader has another question here. Is there any evidence, experimental or perhaps conceptual, that makes orthofab be better than cross map? I don't know if you understand that question. Um, FAB would be better than cross map. I think uh, uh, mm. cross, cross map's advantage is you do not need a common line chain while you're making mm. an IgG like uh, uh, the asymmetric by specific, right? Mm -hmm. So then uh, I think when you talk about the FAB, you're talking about uh, if you only have nothing to hold, but without uh, uh, like the cross map, which means you don't need uh, uh, the cross map and you have a common line chain. So 
And right now, actually, due to the, the IP issue, because cost map painting is not expired yet, and we mm -hmm. only work on the common light chain for map. And we can do both. We can either uh, fish out a common light chain, just like a Chugis way, or we can, you know, and design a common light chain. So we have a painting demonstrate how we design a common light chain. So if the two light chain share more than 80% homology, we can design a common light chain into between them to serve for a light chain for both antibodies, for both arms of a bi specificity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rick, Rick Ganguly is asking Will selecting the metastable state from a short MD simulation resolve structural stability issues? And the stability issue actually for monoclonal antibody. Uh, our current software can easily uh, resolve it and then we test it on bench. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. the difficulty is for the uh, the complicated structure like uh, different uh, kinds of bi-specific, tri-specific, because it's difficult to make a very accurate structure as like uh, a full structure. We have to make a part of it here, a part of it there, then link those information together mm -hmm. to judge so this needs a lot of experience and also we need to be guided by the bench data to perform the second mm -hmm. round or the third round design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And Jonas Funk asks, what is the timeline for designing an antibody starting from the CDRs to the finished design? If you are talking about affinity maturation, the design is very fast. The design is only mm -hmm. overnight. And the bench work is also faster because if you already have a plasmid ready, you only need to introduce site mutations and then do trans and transfection to test uh, the expression medial spine ability, right? So that uh, one round is three weeks, but the successful rate is higher depending on the accuracy of the antigen antibody complex structure. So if we have a real structure, the successful rate is almost 100%. But if we have a model the structure, Depends on the accuracy. Sometimes uh, it's uh, it's good. Sometimes, uh, yeah, we fail. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And Don Don Mian Leon, I think I pronounced that correctly, has another good question. What would be the typical triage process? Which means how many variants are expressed in each round of optimization, and how many rounds do you really need for success? Uh, it's again depends on the difficulty of the project. For example, humanization, we usually do like uh, we design less than five humanized heavy and less than five humanized light chain. So most situation is four, four or three, four, right? So therefore, so the combination only be more than 25. And mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's uh, the answer. And then for affinity maturation, the first round, we only design single mutation like. Uh, uh, we design which which mutation is a predicted improvement for binding, right? Then we combine those, those like um, the site mutation which shouldn't affect each other on 3D structure to create the final leader. So, but for more difficult design, like uh, if a tri-specific antibody has aggregation issue, that is very tricky because sometimes you build up a, a, a model for a fragment of it, it's fine. You didn't see any aggregation surface. But when you put them together, they are aggregation. So for those, we, we need to like uh, uh, sometimes um, we, we need to replace linkers, like because linker size matters. When the linker is very long, it will have some aggregation issue because the additional domain will fall down, burn down, and uh, has some non-specific uh, interaction with the following up IG structure also. So this is difficult. So it's case by case, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, there's one question I just scrolled up that I missed. It's actually from Anch Tandem. And the question is, maybe you understand this. I'm a little confused by it. But on what basis is the optimization done since antibodies are being developed via CAD? Do you understand that? Maybe you could respond. On um, what basis okay. is the optimization being done? Uh, I think uh, it depends on what's the definition for optimization, right? So mm -hmm. uh, there are two situations for us. Situation one is some of our partner or clients come to us to say, okay, my antibody has a low expression level. Can you fix that? So this would be a, a, comp a complex uh, 
plotted. The reason is you don't know what's the reason to cause the, uh, the low expression. It's like uh, the uh, aggregation issue, it's the stability issue. So then we need to uh, study everything. But sometimes uh, people come to you a very simple question. Okay, so this antibody, uh, we, when we check the aggregation with DRS, the readout is bad, can you fix that? So then it's very straightforward. Aggregation, we need to reduce, right? So um, I think uh, um, most situations for monoclonal antibody, all these questions are really easier to resolve. Again, what's mm -hmm. difficult is for complex antibody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And I think I've addressed all the questions in the chat box. We've got a few more minutes, so I'm going to ask y'all to come up with some other good questions in the last few minutes. And, and while you're thinking of those questions, I just want to take a little side trip here and just acknowledge all the countries that called in today. We had a huge turnout. I think it was probably the biggest turnout I've seen in one of our lock and key series. So just very quickly, of course, all across the USA, I won't get into the towns in cities, but we also had Germany, Saudi Arabia, India, Mexico, Canada, Sweden, Austria, Bangladesh, Portugal, Australia, Ethiopia, Turkey, France, Egypt, Singapore, Colombia, Myanmar, and Nigeria. And in fact, I'm on the road and I'm calling in from Oxford uh, in the United Kingdom tonight. So it's really, really been a world-class group tonight, a huge turnout. And I'll get back to the questions I'm still not seeing anymore. So on that note, I think we could probably close a few minutes early if that's all right. Somebody's asking for us to share the lecture notes. We're gonna share the entire video on YouTube, I think tomorrow. So <clears throat> you can take your notes from that if you like. Uh, but first, I want to thank all the attendees for joining. Like I said, a huge attendance. We appreciate it worldwide. Thanks for listening in. Dr. Liu, I certainly want to thank you. We appreciate it. Congrats on all your success, uh, both with your doctoral degree from Sherbrooke and also your, your success with Antibody Studios. You must be very proud of that. And uh, it's just been quite an honor having you tonight. Very excited exciting technologies on bi and tri-specific binding. And then also, I want to thank my colleague, Christine Lay, who is based in the Houston, Texas area, and she actually coordinated and organized and executed this seminar tonight. So thank you, Christine, as well. And with that, we will sign off, and I hope everybody has a good morning, good evening, or good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.